Hey guys, it's Adam here, your Northern Tech, and today we're doing a review on this beast. What's this beast? This is the Dovepo GX200 Mechanical Safe Mod. What does that mean? You'll find out after the intro. Let's roll it! Oh yeah, love this thing. So what is the Dovepo GX200, you ask? It's a mechanical mod. It doesn't have variable voltage or variable water. It's no different than those pipe bomb looking things that you buy for around 30 bucks. You know, the mechanical mods, no different, except for a few. Now, I'm gonna show you the packaging. It's pretty awesome what it comes with. So let's go down to the table, shall we? Alrighty, so when you get your Dovepo, your GX200, it comes in this nice plastic container. Obviously I can't shut mine because I don't have the tape on it, but on the side here it says Dovepo GX200. I don't know why it shows the picture of a smoking cigarette, because you're not smoking cigarettes. The China efficiency and all the different little things and do not throw in the garbage. Once again, telling you it's the Dovepo with the cigarette and Dovepo electronic cigarette. On the back here it tells you all the specs, so it's a GX200. It's a mechanical mod with protection, which means, uh, well, we'll get into that. Basically, you cannot short this. It'll, it won't fire if it's shorted. Um, if it's not within the ohm ratings of uh, 0.2 ohms to 3 ohms, it won't fire. And here we go. We'll just go ahead and go on with it here. So it's an aluminum device. Awesome. Uh, highlight. Uh, highlight. Okay, so it's just a surface treatment. I'll, the screen's an LED. It'll work from 3.3 volts to 4.2. Now that's the battery operating. Now when you get it down to 3.2 volts, it displays this F3 notification that you need to charge it. Now you can charge this via USB and we'll show you that later on. Um, current output is less than 20 amps, so any 20 amp battery or two 20 amp batteries will do the job for you, no problem. It'll do down to 0 0.2 ohms. It has short circuit protection. It has low voltage protection. Needs two batteries and they run in parallel. And it has uh, automatic protection when the current is higher than 30 amps and it takes about three to five hours to charge. Let's go ahead and lay this back down. We'll open it up. Inside you got the Dovepo, the GX200, nice device. We'll go over this in a bit. We'll show you what else it comes with. Inside you get a nice charging cable, micro USB. It's about a foot long. You get a certificate of authenticity, a screwdriver, and an extra uh, top pin. You know, your uh, 510 connection pin. It's brass, so you get a spare one of those which is awesome. So we'll get the certificate of authenticity out. It just it's, it doesn't even have anything written on it, eh? Like, yup, some certificate, bud. Greatly appreciate that one, but whatever. And you can get them in different colors. You can get them in silver and black. I got them in black and so on and so forth. Tells you how to install the batteries and the different uh, warnings. So, yup. So if you go over the vape, uh, over limit vaping, alarm so when the vaping over 15 seconds it will flash five times and show f1 the gx200 will stop working so that's a 15 second counter but who actually pulls for that long right uh low voltage is when you're below 3.2 volts she will she'll flash f3 which i've shown you already and if you have a short circuit she'll throw f2 which means if you have a bad coil it's shorting out it won't work unlike on a mech mod where it will try and work and probably burn your hand uh, when the temperatures on the battery is over 70 C. So if your batteries are overheating, it'll actually realize that and stop. And when it's charging, it'll display CH. Now, it can be charged with the micro USB or the 18650 charger. So you can use like a Nightcore charger and charge your batteries and then stab them back in and be done with it. However, one thing you cannot do with this device is charge and use at the same time. It does not have pass through capabilities. Once it's charging, Put it down, don't even look at it because you won't be able to use it. And then it tells you a bunch of other nonsense and bullshit about the device, so on and so forth. Very simple. Let's get into the device itself and we'll show you how it's all done. So here is your Dovepo GX200. This is the main battery door. Under here's your batteries. Nothing on this side. On the bottom you have your charging port. I've been using this for about a week now, so it's not exactly the cleanest product. On the front here, or on the uh, other side, sir, you have your LCD display and your button. Now if you tap the button, it'll show you how much voltage is left in the batteries, 4.03. Charging off of the USB cable will bring it up to 4.11. That's as high as she'll charge off the USB. 
I've taken these batteries out and put them in my night core charger and ramped them and I was able to get them up to 4.17 so this here will definitely not overcharge your batteries and of course on the top you have your 510 connector now this battery cover is held on with magnets pop them off inside I have two 35 amp 2500 mAh batteries give me 5000 mAh of power and this thing will go all day I charged this up this morning took it off the charger at about 3 brought it to work used it at work on my breaks and lunch and on the way home and I still have 4.03 volts left and she'll go down to 3.2 before she dies batteries are in parallel and you got to make sure that you put them in right because it does not have reverse polarity protection and it even warns you on the bottom here. Battery reverse may cause serious injuries. Now I bought 10 of these from uh, China at a wholesale. Sold eight, kept two, one for me and one for crazy British bloke. I sold one to my buddy and he was out drinking one night and he reversed the friggin' battery. He was charging off a night core charger and he put the batteries in but he put the positive down here and the negative up here. So he had this one here right and this one here wrong and the device made a sizzle and stopped working. It didn't blow up, it just stopped working. Gotta put the cover back on, like I said, there's magnets there, you just, done. Now something else I wanna show you here is we'll go ahead and screw on a device. I got an Atlantis here with a little bit of juice left in her. We'll go ahead and screw that on and you'll see it says 4.03. Now if we fire it, watch what happens to that number. See it drop? That shows you the voltage drop going from the device through the uh, atomizer and then back. So it's actually 3.78 volts going to the device. And you think, oh, that's not really awesome. You know, I'd get more out of a variable voltage. Keep in mind, these things are pretty cheap and pretty awesome for people who love mech mods. So um, let's go back up to the main screen and uh, we're going to talk about it because there's some pros and cons to this that I want to mention. So as you can tell, it gives you a good chooch. It's a real good device for an all day vape. Like I said, I took it off the charge at three, drove to work, vaped on it, killed the tank, had to reload at work, went out for break, killed the tank. It's only a two mil capacity, but I filled this tank like four times today and it's still going. Now, the pros of it definitely are the dual battery in parallel mode gives you a lot more power throughout the day. So you can vape all day and not have to be sitting by a USB port to charge it all the time. I like that feature. The other thing I like about it is so far everything I, st I stuck on the uh, device, it's worked. You know, everything I put on there, whether it be a dripper, and I have a dripper here that I can show you. I have with me a Patriot, and it is wired uh, 0.8 ohms. So we got her on there. As you can see, it's reading it. Pull the trigger, it's firing it. You know, pull the trigger. Firing it, and even that gives you a decent uh, a decent vape. Now, some of the things I do not like about this is the fact that it's not pass through. I wish it was pass through, but it's not. So. Obviously, if you have another dart on hand when this one's char charging, just grab the other dart and use that. The other thing I don't like is listen to that, listen to that friggin' button rattling away. That's not really a pet peeve. It's more of a meh. Could could have been better. They could have put a better button on there that didn't do that. But that button also causes problems because you got to press it perfectly right, otherwise it won't fire. So you got to like really get on it. And one of my biggest cons with this device is there's no way to turn it off when it's in your pocket. You know, normal devices, you press this five times and it'll turn off, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll turn off. But as you can tell, I'm pressing the shit out of the button. And as I'm doing that, there's vapor coming out of the atomizer because it's firing. There is no way to turn this device off. It is what it is. It's always on when there's batteries in it, which can be bad if you have it in a pocket, uh, like a crowded coat pocket, and it happens to hit something and press that button. But like I said, if it goes on for 15 seconds, it won't, it'll stop firing. But 15 seconds is a while to get that atomizer hot. These here are being sold over on certain sites. I know Fast Tech has them for about 40 bucks. Um, there was a vapor shop out in Nova Scotia selling them for about 50 bucks. Do I think it's a good device to have? 
yes, for an all-day vape, this thing's awesome. That's mainly the reason why I picked them up, and I picked them up at wholesale for that reason, because I realized, you know, the price I paid at wholesale, if it was bunk, it wasn't a big loss, but if it was a good device, scores. But that's basically the Dovepo GX200. It's a box mechanical mod with safeties, so you can't short circuit it, you can't overload it, you can't cook the batteries. If you love this kind of vapor, then you're gonna love this kind of vapor because it's the same thing. And that would be my review on the Dovepo GX200. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns about this, ask me in the, in the uh, comment section. I also wanna put down that uh, there's no way to tell the resistance of your atomizer with this device. It checks it on its own, but it won't relay the information back to you like say, something like the IPV or uh, a DNA chipset device would. So there you go, there's my review on the GX200. Any questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching, and until next time guys, peace the frig out.